the moving of the Holy Spirit here today in your presence. Amen. God is doing a work in you right now. Just say, God, I know it. I receive it. And I thank you that you are doing something new in me. And God sends you from this house of worship, this holy house of prayer, this sanctuary where Christ's name is exalted above every name. And he sends you from this place with his grace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus, may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And may the God of hope fill you now with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May he seal us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, children of the Most High. Live in Him. Serve Him. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So good to worship with you today, church. Be blessed as you go from this place, and we'll see you next Sunday.
Hey, good morning, church. We're so glad you're here. Oh, I'm going to hit pause. I got to hit pause. I just realized I'm looking back there. Faye's not there. There she is. <laughs> We're going to hit a redo on that one. Sorry, Faye. <laughs> I didn't even see you. All right. For real this time. Well, good morning, church. My name is Conan. Why don't you go on ahead and stand with us as we worship the Lord this morning? We're so glad you're here. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the horn with holy thunder and leaves his friendless in I wonder the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a daily love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan, the son and daughter, the king of glory, the king of glory? Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings Oh yeah, this is amazing grace This is a failing love cross oh you were you were laid down your life oh yes then I will be set free oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me oh even leave now worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Come on. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. We believe that today. Come on. Now worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Oh, yes. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. This is a daily love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would, you would lay down your life Oh yes, that I would be set free Oh Jesus I sing for Let's give God some praise this morning, church. Free is good. So good. 
Amen. Hey, go ahead and grab a seat. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Conan. I'm the Creative Arts Student Ministry Director here at Victory Lutheran Church, and we're so glad that you are here today. Uh, we have a very, it's a very special Sunday today. Uh, I don't know if you noticed on your way in, you might have seen the little table we have set out for the sanctity of human life. And so I'm going to ask you to turn your attention to the screens as we uh, have a short clip for you this morning. From the moment of conception, every life is woven together with DNA, which determines gender, eye color, and hair color, and makes us all unique. Each one valued beyond measure God created us in his own image. I have called you by name. You are mine. You can be the voice that saves a life. You can be the friend who encourages a mom. You can be the one that empowers a dad. When we all understand how precious every life is, we can be the instruments to change a culture a culture that values every life as a gift from God. Today, we recognize the sanctity of human life, of every person, young or old, perfectly formed and fashioned by the Creator. So we have a table set out in our narthex. Um, on your way out today, I'd encourage you just to stop by, check out the resources that we have available for you there, and for more information about this organization and how they uh, work to protect the, the lives of the unborn. Um, we also have our morning announcements, which we'll also have on our screens today. and welcome to Victory. Kelsey here with your morning announcements. First up, Love and Respect did start last week, but if you'd like to get plugged in on Thursday nights, it's not too late. Financial Peace University does also start this Thursday, the 25th at 7 o'clock. Child care is available for both classes if you're interested in that. And our annual business meeting is going to be February 4th. All are invited to that. Following our third service at around noon, there will be pizza provided as well. And don't forget to mark your calendar for February 8th. It's Giving Hearts Day. That means the school is going to be having a fundraiser with a $30,000 match, and it'll be happening from 5.30 until 7 that night. Also, men, mark your calendar because your men's retreat is right around the corner on February 9 and 10 at Cooperstown Bible Camp. You can sign up by talking to Faye or Pastor Sean. Don't forget, you can also give online at findvictory.org or on our church center app. And if you're new here, we would love to get to know you. If you could fill out the connection card found in the back of your bulletin and turn it into our coffee center, we have a small gift for you joining us this Sunday. We're so glad that you're here. We hope that you have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday. Oh, man. So we got a lot of exciting things coming up to get involved with. And uh, with that, we're going to read our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Would you stand with me if you're able as we continue to worship the Lord through song? Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When I found in the desert place, when I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. 
every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glory name blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering there's pain in the offering but blessed be your name every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say But blessed be your name You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say but blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Let's give God some praise this morning, church. of the Lord this morning. It is a joy to be together. This morning's scripture reading, it comes from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. This morning, as I was thinking about this time of confession that we're called to, um, as we come to worship, what is, is worship? Right? Worship is coming, and, and not what we are giving to God, but what we are receiving from God and our response to that. As we hear his word, as we hear his proclamations, as we are in the presence of, of his body, his people, um, the invitation that we have to come and to receive from a holy and mighty God. And, and one of the things that we receive here together at Victory is his forgiveness that he pours out freely to those who are faithful and found in him and confess their sins. And, and we want to 
invite you at this time, as, as you are receiving what God is doing right now, as you are receiving his word in your life and he is speaking and leading for, for you to take a moment this morning as we go before the Lord and we, we personally and we privately confess what God has placed on our heart that we need to confess. And so I invite you to lay down the burdens, the sorrows, the sins, the shame, whatever it might be that God is working on your heart this morning, I invite you to put that down at the foot of the cross here this morning so that you might receive what God has for you today. So would you go before the Lord and confess? Father, we thank you as we are invited into your presence here this morning. We are thank you for, for who you are, that you are all powerful. There's nothing in this world, in our lives that you don't have authority over, that you are all knowing, that there isn't a, a hurt or a hardship or or uh, uh, something that we wrestle with in our lives that you aren't aware of. And God, that you are everywhere, that there isn't an area of life that you do not see, that you cannot interact and you do not um, encounter. Lord, but you are present in everything that is life. <laughs> Lord, as we confess this morning, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that is speaking to our hearts. That is, that is loosening these chains that have been holding us in one way or another this morning. And we thank you for this work that you are doing that has brought us to conviction and to a place where we fall down on our knees and our faces and we confess to you that we are unworthy. God, would you remove these sins and these burdens from us as far as the east is from the west? And God, this morning, would we receive the proclamation and the promise of your forgiveness that is given to us in true faith and repentance? As you confess to us, as you have confessed in true faith, church, your sins are forgiven. Would you stand as we respond to this holy God who has now proclaimed his righteousness over you? But I 
hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing but Thinking compare your living home, yes, your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone, oh yes, in your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, come find this place and fill the atmosphere, your glory. long for to be overcome by your presence Lord now Holy Spirit you are welcome here come from this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be Every song must end, but 
before you this morning just with hearts full of gratitude for everything that you were doing for your promises for your faithfulness for the truth that you are speaking into our lives each and every day heavenly father receive our gifts of worship this morning as our voices cry out to you our holy god 
not because of what we're expecting, but because of what you've already given to us, Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you this morning. Lord, as we come before you with our, with our tithes and our offerings, with these gifts, whether much or little, we pray that you would receive these from a good and gracious heart as you are leading us to these gifts. God, would you use these? Would you take these from our first fruits, from, from what you have given and what you've provided in our daily lives, and, and would you use them for your glory, for the, for the work of the cross, for the building of the kingdom that you are doing here at Victory across Jamestown and across the world? Lord, we just thank you so much for your goodness that we get to experience each and every day. In your name we pray, amen. I'm not gonna ask you to be seated because I'm gonna ask you to move around and greet your neighbors, but uh, I just prayed for the offering. Um, we have many ways that you can give, whether that's uh, through the Church Center app, following the link in our website, or we've got a basket back in the narthex. Uh, we invite you to give there. If you are new here, we are so glad that you're here visiting us today, and we pray that you feel the Spirit of God moving, that you feel welcomed, and uh, that you would want to come back. As, as Kelsey mentioned in the announcement video, we do have mugs back there, a gift for you, along with a pamphlet about just some of the things that are going on here at the church to get connected, get you some information. So we invite you to stop by after the service with those connection cards and uh, to pick that up there. But we want you to get to know some people. Would you stand, step out of your chairs, of your aisles, and greet somebody this morning? Right. If you see this friendly, smiley face right here, you know what that means, kids. It's time for King's Kids, pre-K to second grade. You are dismissed to follow Miss Kendra. Thanks for uh, being faithful. Pre-K to second grade kids are dismissed. Kendra's got some fun things. She's going to teach you the Word of God. You're going to have a snack. 
going to play a game, all of the above. It's all good. It's all good. I believe it is all good. You ever, uh, you ever bounced around, been to a few different churches, you tried one, didn't quite fit, been to a different church, didn't you? You, you kind of liked the look of the church, but you got inside and it felt like a, like a, like a mortuary, you know, people are like walking around zombies, but it felt like it was just, there was no spirit of God, it was dead. You hungered for God's word, you hungered for God's people. You knew that there was something in your spirit you were longing for, but you just didn't know how to get it. Like, where's God? Why can't I sense his spirit moving? Why do I feel like I'm stuck? This morning, we're going to be uh, in part two of the first sermon uh, in the sermon series, Standing Firm. And I want to talk to you today. I just want to, I just want to wet your whistle on what does it mean to stand firm in the faith and be part of a, bo a, a body of believers where I am getting fed, I am growing, God is changing me because I know that I know that I know that when I go to that worship service, the power of the Holy Spirit is so filling me that my response is I want to confess my sin and I want to praise God, amen? amen? That's how you know the word of God is being faithfully preached when you have a hunger to, to confess your sin and to just praise God for what he, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, has done for you. Now, there's a way to do it, and I'm going to work my way through it in this message. And the way you want to do it is just the opposite of the way the world would tell you to do it, to have a nice group of people. The way you do it is you, gra you, you gather a whole bunch of messy people. You, you, you bring this messy group of people into your fellowship. And as you bring this messy group of people into your fellowship... You, you, you lay God's word out as the plumb line and, and, and you, you, you vow to God that you're going to be faithfully listening to his word, praying his word, and trusting his word, and not trying to use your, you know, thoughts of the world, thoughts of your flesh, and even allow the devil to get in there, but you're just going to say, God, please, I promise you, help me to just to declare your word alone. And as the word of God is your plumb line and you bring these people in and you have an opportunity to pray with messy people, encourage messy people, bless messy people, the one thing that you start to see is, is that God has his hands wrapped around those messy people because for the first time in their life, they're experiencing what we call church. That's what church is, you see. It's a bunch of messy people who really feel safe to confess their sin and hold on to God and his promises and to encourage each other. And as the, as the group gathers, God's spirit starts to move in a powerful way. Let me give you an example. In this church, Monday through Sunday, you're going to have 20 different ministry outlets. You're going to see Bible studies, men's studies, women's studies, mixed studies, older studies. You're going to see uh, the senior citizens gathering. You're going to see, oh, that's not the senior citizens. What's that proper word, Faith? Timeless blessings. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get in trouble now. You're going to watch... The youth gathering, you're going to see what God is doing within the church. But one of the fun things that I, I have a chance to be in a few of those studies, I'm not in all 20, but one of those things that I am a part of, excuse me, a part of, is I'm a part of a thing called Man Cave. And I watch how these group of, this group of men come together. And as they come together, they come with brokenness. They come with, with, with broken hearts and sorrowful hearts. And they come with, with need to be encouraged and to be blessed and be lifted up. And the last thing that they need is to be beat down with a heavy word, with a, with a law word. Tell them, you're not measuring up. You need to be this, do this, do this. You need to get with this. You need to act better. Because they're, they're coming in barely surviving, barely breathing. But these men come in. They have an opportunity to hear what God's word says. They have an opportunity to just dump. And they have an opportunity to be encouraged and blessed and to know that every man in our group has their back. Now, what, I, what I've witnessed is, as this happens time and time again, the Spirit of God seems to get more powerful, more strong, more powerful, more strong. Last Tuesday night, I literally was watching a revival happen right in front of my eyes. 
I didn't really invite most of those new guys that came, but some of the new guys that came, the first guy sitting there, young man, high school, says, I'm struggling with life. I'm not going to get into details, but I think you adults know what I'm saying, right? He's struggling with life. Like, why do I want to live? <sighs> My heart was heavy. As he was talking, I said to myself, Jesus, help me! Help me, help me, help me, help me. I don't, I, you know, like, what do I do? And so the Holy Spirit just whispered into my ear. When he got done, he said, why don't you ask the group of men? We split the group. It's, it's rather large. So half the group goes downstairs and half the group stays upstairs with me. And we split the group. And, and the Holy Spirit just said, why don't you ask these men to raise their hand, any man that's really questioned life, any man that's really wondered, do I want to even live it? Has there been a time where you've even questioned, is life worth living? I said, is there any men in this group that's ever felt exactly like this? Would you just raise their hand? Of the 11, 12 guys that were there, I'm sure we had nine hands that went in the air. Of the nine hands that went in the air, I just went around and I said, uh, could I have you? Could I have you? Would you? And I had guys share. And the more that these men were sharing, the more I could see the weight just starting to whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's coming off this young man. It's powerful. And one of the most powerful things you can do, men, especially if you've never been in the Word, you don't, you're, you're not well versed in the Word, one of the most powerful things you men can do is get your sons and get up to that man cave so that you can, you can introduce him what God can do, what family looks like. And we have a ladies there on Thursday night. Ladies, you can bring your daughters. You could see what God is doing there. There's plus, there's, like I said, there's 18 other studies going on in the church. Just stop at the coffee bar and ask one of the gals behind the coffee bar immediately after church, where can I plug into some of the ministries here in this church because we have a lot for you. But one of the unique things that was happening there was that as this man was hearing the testimonials of all these other men, I said, can I share with you what Jesus would say in a way that will help liberate you and set you free? He said, yeah, I'd love to hear it. So we got him into the word, and he was flipping around, reading a scripture, reading another scripture, this and that. We got to the very end, Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, I'll come in. Well, guess what? He'd already heard a bunch of scripture, 20 passages at least. So I believe God's word will not return void. I believe God's word is active and sharper than a double-edged sword. And I believe that God's word makes alive, Ephesians 2, 6. And I believe God was doing all the things that God was doing. I looked at that young man with a group of men around. And I said, what do you think God is telling you? He said, I think I need God. One of the men put a chair in the middle. I said, would you like to sit in there? All the men got around that young man. They laid hands on him. And he wonderfully, with tears running down his face, asked and received the Lord Jesus to come into his heart. About that time, as I was praying for him, one of the brand new men, probably in his mid to late 20s, gets up and leaves. And I'm thinking to myself, ah, great. All right, well, new guy gone. I probably offended him in some way. I usually offend someone somehow. So, oh, see you, buddy. And uh, he goes down the steps in the way that he went down. And as we were wrapping up the prayer time, and it was kind of a, a long time prayer time, he came up the back steps in the loft. And the guy walks right into the room and he plops right down in the seat. And I'm like, whoa, I don't even remember your name, but uh, did you need prayer? He's like, well, isn't this just what this is all about? Yeah, I need prayer. And I'm like, okay, tell us about, tell us your story. So he goes on to tell us a story. We could, I could clearly tell, based on some of the things that he was sharing with me, that, um, that he, was, he was struggling with a lot of demonic interference. And so we started praying. But before I prayed, I said, listen, I can't pray with you until you, until you, you hear that, you know, even though you're probably not possessed, there's an oppression hanging on you. We can get rid of this stuff. But if God gets rid of it, and you don't ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to save your soul, he, these demons will bring seven friends back, amen? That's what happens. When demons leave you and you don't, you don't get serious with Jesus Christ, they're, they're, each demon will bring seven friends back according to the word of God. And he said, ooh, I'm an atheist. I, I really didn't come here thinking I was going to ask Jesus to like forgive me and come in, but that's terrible. And I said, well, let's get into the word of God. He reads the word of God and 
we quote the word of God, and I said, could I ask you again, what would you like to do? I need Jesus. We prayed over him. That young man came to the Lord. We got done praying over that young man. There was a third young man that was up there, and I was like, hey, would you like to receive Jesus? He said, absolutely. I'll sit right here. Let's just pray. And uh, last, last Tuesday night, we had three young men that received the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how does that happen? It's very simple. You see, you got a group of misfits, a group of helpless, messy people that are coming together. They've got, they, they know that each other has their back. They know that the word of God is the plumb line, and they know that they're not going to get beat down, but they're going to be built up. And the more they're built up and encouraged and loved, the more they become the church. This is the larger church, but they are, have a little a little significant gathering where love is the predominant thing in that group of men. And there is literally a revival happening with a group of men in this, in this, in this uh, Bible study, which I love to watch happen. Not me. It's the word of God moving and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. Which reminds me of what happens when a church comes together expecting miracles, expecting Expecting people are going to get saved. Expecting life is going to come out of the word. It kind of reminds me of a story of one of the brothers up at the man cave who just really came to the Lord this last year. But this is a man, he's either all in or he's not all in. Amen? He's either all in or... I love men like that. They're not mamby-pamby, you know, like, you know, you don't know where this guy stands. No, you know exactly where he stands. He would tell you, this is the way it is, buddy. I'm like, ooh, I like these kind of guys. He called me and he shared a story about how he stood firm and how the Holy Ghost radically changed his faith, his family, his life. But first he started sharing with me how it all began. Watch the screens and hear a story that's going to touch your soul. Hey everybody, welcome to Victory Lutheran Church today at uh, the worship service. We're glad you're here and I want to do an interview today with Justin Scadam and uh, he has a story for us that I thought would be perfect for our sermon series as we stand firm in the faith. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do as we got going is just, just Justin, if you could, could you, could you encapsulate uh, for us, how did, you, how did you come to know the Lord, Justin? Well, my wife has always been a faithful person, and I really haven't. And we were going through a pretty rough patch, and a lady by the name of Sherry invited us here to Victory, and Sherry and Oli, and we came, we've tried many churches in Jamestown, and I never really felt at home. And the first day I walked in here, we knew this was the place. And since then, it's just been great things. Wonderful. So tell us, when, when was that moment when you became born again? When you said, I am a Christian, I, I am a follower of Jesus. What, when did it click for you? Well, I had been coming here for a good nine months, not so much playing the part, but really trying to figure out if this was the route I wanted to take and study it a little bit. And it was through multiple talks with you, the man cave, uh, services here. And it wasn't until a few months ago that I decided I want to give myself fully. And that's when I came in here and you prayed with me at the cross, and we, we reborned me. I'll never forget <laughs> it. On our knees at the cross, lit bright red. Yeah, when I thought your hand was on my leg, and it wasn't. <laughs> no, no. That, was, uh, that was a powerful day. It was. It was. It was. So, Justin, we are in a, we're in a sermon series here called Standing Firm, and... Um, you have had a number of opportunities in your, in your young, fresh faith to say, I'm going to do this. This is what I believe God's calling me to do. Um, just a few weeks ago, I got a text from you, and uh, I knew you guys were in trouble. You and your wife, she was having a health crisis. 
and uh, you were you were about ready to get into your car and take a trip to Rochester, Minnesota. Would you pick up the story for us right there and tell us what was going on with your wife and uh, why were you standing firm at that moment when you were heading to Rochester, Minnesota? Well, we got the call before we left. We, My wife's been waiting for about a year for a spinal procedure and she's been <clears throat> railroaded in North Dakota and we finally said we're just going to go to Mayo and get it done. And We got the call right before we left on the day of and that insurance denied her. And she was crying because she thought she wasn't gonna get it. And I told her over and over, I said, just let's get in the car and let's go. Like something's telling me for us to go anyway. If we have to self pay, if we have to reapply with insurance, we'll do it. And uh, so we did, we got on the road. During the whole drive, she was on the phone with insurance, with Mayo trying to get it worked out. We put in an, another emergency referral. And uh, so we got there and we hadn't heard back on whether we were approved or not. So we decided it was three days of procedures and we decided to get the hotel room and check in and we did that. And the next day when we went into the doctor, we checked her in and they checked her in fine, so we thought maybe insurance approved it. And before they pulled her back, they told us we had to go down to the billing department. And so we went down there and they told us that insurance denied us again, and that if we wanted to have the procedure done, we would have to self-pay the full amount, not a deposit, the full amount before they would even see her. Which, how, did, how did you feel at that moment when you heard, yet again, you've been denied? My heart dropped my heart dropped and me and my wife literally prayed over and over we had a very short window to tell them yes that we're going to do the self-pay or no we're not before the appointment would be canceled because there was no time where the appointment was like 15 minutes from then and so we prayed about it we decided to self-pay called some family knew that we would have a little help because all every dime we had was going towards her treatment at that point. Wow. And uh, so we did it. We wrote the check, thought we were completely broke. We were gonna be needing to get money from family to help with the bills. I was gonna have to be working night and day to try and catch back up. We get back to Jamestown. They say it'll take a couple weeks for her to know if it worked. And uh, we asked for an itemized bill because we wanted to know everything that we were paying for. And so about a week ago, we got the itemized bill in the mail. And in between then, we've been praying the whole time for God to help guide us through this and make sure that we're okay as a unit, as a family, you know. And uh, we got the bill and the neurosurgeon from Mayo did the visit pro bono charges us two dollars wow. for it. And the remainder of the bill, we have a balance of zero. The remainder of the bill, they're forcing the insurance company to pay it. You you sensed God telling you to get into your car that day. You told your wife to get in. We're going, no matter what, I remember calling you and praying with you as you were like driving through Valley City. Yep. And you guys were heading to Mayo no matter what. You believe God spoke to you, you stood firm, and you did what God called you to do, and a procedure which would have cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars cost you $2. $2 for that part. It's still a few thousand, but we don't have to pay that. It's going to the insurance. Wow. We, we have a zero balance. Zero balance. Yeah. So God's checkbook took care of you. He did. And I would call that a miracle, wouldn't you? I would. We started crying. We prayed. We thanked him. And it was, it was hard to believe. That is amazing. And I believe this story is going to build the faith of many people in our church today as they hear how God calls us to step out in faith. God calls us to believe. God calls us to stand firm. And sometimes what the Lord will do is use the priest of the family. He'll speak to you to lead firm and strong. You did that, Justin. 
I'm proud of you. Thank Victory's you. proud of you. Um, what, a, what a wonderful addition to our family. We love you. We're glad you're here. I love this church and all of you guys, too. Yeah, you get your, your family's a beautiful, precious family. We're, gr we're grateful you're here. And Folks, that's, that's the work of God. Through his word, as Justin believed that God was going to help his dear wife at a very critical time. We're going to continue on with the message and see how how does God's word help us to see what we need to do in the midst of the tough times. So let's open our Bibles and take a look at what God has for us now. What a story, huh? Come on. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. One of the amazing things about having an opportunity to hear a story like that is, is that you're, you're in church with Justin, and he's in church with you and many others, and his wife Erin, and, and their family, and, and one of the things that starts happening is they weave their faith into your faith, and your faith into their faith, and you start telling stories. And you see, when you tell a story about what God is doing with you and you tie it to the word and you share it with someone else, then all of a sudden God's story becomes your story and your story becomes a part of what God's story is doing in the next person who probably came from a church that was dead, church that had no hope, church that wasn't preaching the word, church that was completely a mortuary with a bunch of zombies walking around not understanding or getting what is God doing here in this church. But now you're all of a sudden in a church that's spirit-filled, God-honoring, preaching the word, believing in miracles, believing that people are going to truly come to the word, come to the Lord. They're going to get saved. They're going to become born again. When law and gospel is preached purely and perfectly through Jesus' word, not me, and uh, Jesus' word is the one that is absolutely perfect from heaven. That's the thing that we hold on to. I make mistakes. For example, last week, I actually said uh, I was talking about, I have uh, a right to speak the truth. And then I quoted the Second Amendment instead of the First Amendment. Correction! First Amendment is the speech. Second is the gun. And I got those two mixed around. I was having a senior moment. I'm getting older. I make those mistakes from time to time. Thank you for those that corrected me. I needed that. But the question is, as you heard Brother Justin sharing, how about you? Do you, long, do you long to say, God, I want to be where Justin is at. I want to have that kind of faith. I want you to move me and to, to, to work through me in the ways that I see the church move. I want to be a part of a church that's actually changing lives and doing things. Well, then, guess what? You need to understand that you're messy, you need to get into our messy mess. You need to be willing to confess sin and trust Christ and walk with us. You need to have each other's back and to pray and to be there with each other. You need to be willing to do life with a bunch of messy people and not live a snobby life, not live, a, I don't want to do this. I'm not that. I'm too busy with my own little life. Well, then guess what? You're going to be in the country club church where it's only death and dying. And guess what? You can be in the death and dying country club church and be coming here every week if you're not plugged into what God is doing. Can I get an amen? amen? Come on. Get plugged in. There are things to do. There are opportunities. There are people that are wanting to know you and to be part of your world. And so there are a number of things that we need to experience in order for us to be part of God's work, God's church. You see, we'll all experience difficult seasons in our life. But the challenge is, is to remain faithful, remain steadfast, to remain resolute, through the difficult times. And right now, I believe there are people in this church that are going through difficult times. They're struggling. And they're struggling to see what God is doing and where God is at. And interestingly, interestingly enough, as we look at this word of God, we see that God was doing the same kind of a work in a brand new upstart church called Thessalonica. And God was speaking to Thessalonica through the words of Paul. Uh, and Thessalonica was going through a season of growth, a season of change, and they were being pressed in and all, all sides to stand firm in their faith. And Paul's message is timeless. Paul's message is truthful. Paul's message is compassionate and caring to all those people 
who are needing a word. And so the first thing that we do when we want to be part of a church that is really moving is we need to be encouraged. Here's what Paul is saying at the very opening of his letter. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, I always thank God for all of you mentioning you in our prayers. I want to ask you a question. Church, here, listen to me. When times are good, I know you thank God, but I want to ask you a question. When times aren't good, are you willing to thank God anyway? Because if you can't thank God on the not so good times, it's going to be hard for you to watch how God is going to do heart surgery on you and change your world and to give you an opportunity to move in the spirit of God the way God would have you in a healthy, good church. If you can't thank God for the bad times, you might be saying, yeah, but pastor, you don't understand. I'm dealing with death. I'm dealing with cancer. I'm dealing with some terrible thing. Well, then I would say this. Today's a lot better than yesterday because today's one day closer for us to getting into heaven. Amen. If I can have one day closer to getting into heaven, then I can thank God, even if I'm in the midst of struggles and tough times, because I know that God's hand is on me. What a powerful thing that God gives us to understand that, that he is here to strengthen us, equip us, admonish us, and exhort us. In other words, Paul is giving us the opportunity to see what he's doing in a way through the word to help us to embrace the good times and the bad times, but to come together with a, a, a group of messy people, broken, hopeless, and helpless, and to give words of encouragement. Now, the opposite of a word of encouragement is maybe a word of discouragement or even a negative, gossiping, hurtful word. Now, when you give a word of encouragement, that's Jesus speaking through someone else to you. If you hear a word of discouragement, a breakdown, a put down, a gossiping word, the devil has taken a hold of someone's mouth and you need to say to them, hey, look, I'm in a good church. I want to hear the word of God and good stuff. I don't want to participate in the devil's language of ripping down the church and I'm participating in this secret cry at gossiping. Let's not go there, amen? You, we don't put negative stuff on other people and think that we're going to get away with it. The best thing we can do is at the beginning of every church service, you heard Pastor John do it today, with our attitudes, we come to the cross and we say, Jesus, forgive us of our sin. If you want to be part of a messy church that's moving and glorifying God and seeing the hand of God moving, we just give all of our sins to God. Like Justin said, we give it all to God and we still know that we're a mess, but Jesus, he's perfect, right? And, and the perfect work of God is moving and changing within us. You see, point two, we understand it's all about building each other up. And throughout the New Testament, there are a lot of references to things being built up or established. In many of the, Paul's letters, we see this type of language to talk about how we are to encourage one another. Paul says it all through the epistles. We are to build each other up in Christ. We are to stand firm on the unshakable faith. What's that? The word of God. It's unshakable. And so as we encourage and build each other up, we see in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 through 11, a picture of what Paul is saying that we are to do in order to be a part of a church that's actually moving and changing the environment, the landscape. But since we belong to the day, that's in the present tense, so Paul was talking to the church then, and Paul is talking to Victory Lutheran Church now, today. We belong to the day, present tense. Let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you called on his name today? Have you trusted Jesus today? For that's the only way that we can get saved is through Christ as we bring our sins to him. You see, he died for us. Look at that, so that. Circle that as you got your Bibles open. So that is a hint of clause. So that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are are doing. What a powerful thing. Therefore, since we belong to Christ, the day, what day? Today. We belong to Christ. What's God doing? Through his word, he's making you alive. To what? Confess sins. To what? Trust in him. To what? To recognize it's my gift to encourage and build up the person sitting next to me. Look at the person sitting next to you and say, I get to build you up. Go ahead, say it right now. Yes, yes, I get to build you up. That's your gift. Just, just receive it. I get to build you up. We are engaged in the most important 
church building project of all times. The more, the more we build each other up, the more the power of God starts changing Jamestown and beyond. The church is, is God's people with Christ in the center. It's God's people confessing their faith and holding on to the promises of God. And Paul says, encourage one another, build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Now this word Paul uses for build here in, first, in Thessalonians is the root word that Jesus uses in Matthew 16, 18. Take a look at this. He says, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will, same Greek word as Paul's using here in Thessalonians, build my church. We are called to build God's church. And so we are continuously building God's church by building each other up, standing firm in the faith, not bending, not giving, being relentless to loving one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another, not being weary of building each other up, but, but, but taking strength and hope as we trust in the word, as we hold on to the word, as we read the word. What's one of the best ways to stop building up the church? Stop reading the word of God. You see, it's word. Remember what I said? Word. Remember what I said? Say it. Do you do devotions every day? Do you pray every day? Do you get back into devotions and encourage people with the word God gave you in your devotion? Do you do it? If you're not doing it, then I have a question for you. Are you saved? If you say yes, then I'm going to ask you this. Why are you so lazy? That's not biblical to be lazy. God calls us to step out in faith and do the word. Because when we start doing the word, God's word starts to change us and we start to step out in faith and act in faith. Then we start to stand firm. Point three, by faith we believe that Jesus lived and died and rose again. And we will eventually and he will eventually return. By faith we know that Jesus told us trouble will come. John 16, Take a look at this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. I'll never forget, as I was in the, not in the Word, but in my new formed accountability group, one of the men in my Bible study said, Pastor Sean, uh, did you get into the Word yesterday? No, I was so busy doing church life, I didn't have time to get in the Word. And they're like, wow, you tell us to get in the Word, but you're not in the Word. Well, I was working on a sermon. And they said, isn't that your job? That, yes, that's my job. Did you get into the Word just to let God talk to you? And I said, no, I was too busy. They said, can I rebuke you and tell you to stop being so busy? I get held accountable too, as I should, as I should hold you accountable. Matthew 24, 45 says this, 20, 24, 40, 24 and 25 says this. For false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, that's those that are saved. If, if that were possible, see, I have told you ahead of time. Now listen, if we are in the word of God, Guess what? It daily in the Word of God, praying in the Word of God, you will not be deceived because you're plugged into the church, you're plugged into the Word, we're holding each other accountable in the Word, the, word, the, the church stays firm. If you're not in the Word, but you're in church, you're not in a Bible study, you're not doing devotions, but you're kind of in church, you know what it means, hey, you need to be born again, but I'm so busy with my job, I don't have time for these things. You can easily be, de be deceived by something you see on the internet, by something you see in a, in a, hear on a podcast, by something you see on TV, by something you see on social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Deception is coming after the church. Are you rooted in the word? Because if you are, then let's get together as messy people and hold each other to God's word and his standard. Bless each other. Not under the law, but under the gospel of grace. You see, it's by faith that we've been warned. It's by faith that we've been encouraged. It's by faith that we stand together, united until Christ comes again. It's by faith that this message of hope and encouragement is sp speaking to you. Throughout Paul's letter, Paul continuously goes on time and time again encouraging the believers to stand firm to embrace the full armor of God. Look at Ephesians 6. He says this, Finally be strong in the Lord. I re we read this whole thing to you, Pastor John did. In the mighty power put on the full armor of God. Take your stand. 
The devil schemes, and it goes on and on and on. And finally he says, and after we've done all this with everything, stand. What's that mean? In the word. Stand in the word. You see, church, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is not against your neighbor. It's not against your coworker. It's not against your friend. It's not against your husband. It's not against your wife. Your battle is against your flesh, the devil, and the world. They want to destroy you. They want to destroy your family. They want to take your soul to hell. And they want to destroy the very image and picture of God, which is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, husband, wife, and child. Once the devil can kill the family, he can create destruction. Once he gets you isolated away from the word, the devil is out to bring down the church. But we stand on the word and we pray against his wily ways. You see, our battle with the original adversary, the king of division, the king of destruction, the devil, Lucifer, Satan, our battle with him is one that Jesus says has been won. And he will do everything he can do to get you off the path of life, to get you off the path of faith, to get you off the path of hope and love. But my dear friends, when the devil comes and tries to get you on the path of death and disbelief, you declare to him that I have been washed in the blood. I know I'm not perfect, but Jesus is perfect and his perfect blood says that I'm good enough. Because when God sees me, he sees a perfect child of God because he sees his son that covers me in his blood. And I know that Jesus loves me. We must learn, like the early church, to stand firm and stand together and get into the word and fight against the wily ways of the devil that's trying to destroy us, trying to destroy our church, trying to destroy our families. Say no. Get into the word. I'm going to land the plane like this as the team comes forward. You ever played tug of war before? You ever seen a tug of war being done? It's very simple. You get a big thick rope. You get about 20 people on each side of the rope. You put a line in the middle. If you, if you pull hard enough, you pull one of the team, one of the people on the team, you pull that team across the line and they, 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 they go across the line and you win. I know there are some people here today engaged in, extremely, in an extremely dangerous game of spiritual tug of war. I know there are people in this sanctuary today. You can never assume everyone's having a, a perfect go of it. You're being pulled right now. You are being pulled into exhaust, exhaustion. You're being pulled into losing your footing. You're losing your grip. You're wondering where God is, how God could help me. And my dear friend, according to the word of God, as you're losing your grip, Jesus is putting his hand down over the top of your hand. He's putting your hand down over the top of your hand and he's squeezing firm and he's pulling on that rope and he's saying, take heart. Take heart, my son. Take heart, my daughter. I'm digging in my heels where your foot is slipping. So, so re refasten. Take a tighter grip and know that through the word of God, which is true, I will not relinquish. I will hold on to you. And this is your opportunity to, to, to just to turn the game that you're playing over in your mind, to turn that game over to Jesus. Take a stand today for what you know is true and right and good. Take a stand for Christ and know that God has a plan to set you free and deliver you from the very demons that are trying to destroy you and your family, for the very people that are trying to, the demons are working through to trying to hurt you. This is your opportunity to take your stand and say, I know that God is for me and nothing can be against me because I am a child of God. I've called on his name and I've trusted Jesus and he wants to encourage you today as the praise team is playing. I'm here and I want to pray and a blessing over you. You got some of those voices that are working in your mind. You got some of those baggage brokenness that are really hurting your heart. Then I want you, you come. You come and let's pray. We're going to stand to our feet Conan's going to lead us in a worship song. If God is working on your spirit, this is your time. You come, let us pray. During this service, right now, we're going to wrap it up. Don't walk out of here. If God's working on your heart, let's give it to God. Let's pray for, let's pray for anything you got in your spirit right now. Let's worship the Lord.
splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. see how great, how great is our God. In days to age He stands, time is in His hands, beginning and the end, beginning today there are probably some people that are sitting here today saying see I made it through that service once again and God's word didn't do what the pastor said I ask you for permission before I give the benediction may I have permission to pray 
that God would release you from any kind of disruptive spirit that's causing you to not hear him now so that we can pray over you right after this service. If there's someone here that said, see, I, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't have any, there's no move of God for me. I didn't care. May I have permission to pray that for you? You just quietly in yourself, you say, yeah, go ahead, pastor. Let's see what you got. I don't have anything, but Jesus does. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray if there's one person here who's in bondage, if there's one person here that's hearing voices that are not from you and that has never really been set free, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the powerful hand of God to bind up that demonic spirit, that wayward spirit, that, 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 that heart that yearns for Jesus. And Lord God, we pray that you would bind up anything that would causing, be causing disruption for someone and that you would release them to come and to pray with us, to pray with me and to be set free by the powerful hand of God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would release someone, many people, to be free in you. And go with this benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you as God fills you with all hope and joy and peace as you have trusted in him by the power of his spoken word that you may leave this place overflowing with the hope and the power of the Holy Ghost. And we pray that you'd seal it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is God's word. Receive it and be blessed. If that was you today, I want you to just catch me as I'm shaking hands and say, Pastor, would you pray with me later? I'll know. Yes. Let's pray later. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Let's sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. so good to worship with you today, church. Be blessed as you go from this place today, and we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you all.